Om Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, thank you for joining today. We're going to take a day's break from the Bhagavatam because it's the disappearance day of two uh, really amazing personalities. Um, and a little bit we're going to carry on with the theme of being um, looked after or protected, um, just like uh, this bhajan that Karuna just sang, how Bhakti Murataka is saying, when will that day come when I am treated by the Vaishnava as his own? So um, uh, it's a disappearance day of Jagadish Pandit, and we'll talk about him in a minute. And also it's a disappearance day of Jiva Goswami, very important personality of one of the six Goswamis. We'll talk about him as well. So this is a nice verse that comes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Jagadish Pandita Haye Jagat Pavan Krishna Amrita Vase Yena Vasagana Translation, Jagdisha Pandit, the 15th branch of Lord Nityananda's followers, was a deliverer of the entire world. Devotional love of Krishna showered from him like torrents of rain. Mm -hmm. He was born in the town of Gohati in modern Assam. His father's name was Kamalaksha Pata. Both of his parents were devotees of Vishnu. When they died, he came with his wife, Dukhini, and his brother Hiranya to Mayapur on the shore of the Ganga, where they built a home near that of Jagannath Mishra. So they were similar age to Jagannath Mishra. Jagada, uh, Jagadish Pandit became Jagannath Mishra's very close friend. <clears throat> Jagadish and his wife Dukini had the same kind of parental affection for little Nimai as Jagannath, um, uh, Jagannath um, Mishra and Sachi Devi themselves. Dukini was like a mother to Nimai and even sometimes acted it as his wet nurse. Nimai, the son of Sachi, is none other than the son of Yashoda. So that's Lord Krishna himself, Supreme Lord Krishna incarnate. It is not possible for anyone, <clears throat> but an eternal associate of the Lord to have the good fortune to treat him like a son in this way. This is really extraordinary. Uh, Nimai, one time, he begged for Jagadish's offering. So this is a really amazing pastime. Gauranga showed through his pastimes just how dear he considered Jagadish Pandit to be. Gauranga is the father of Sankirtan. So he started this um, Hare Krishna movement, chanting of the holy names, especially on the streets. <clears throat> and even as a child, he tricked everyone into chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This is a really interesting picture. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sachidevi in the garden. Mahaprabhu is crying. So we'll see why. Sachi and all the other neighbors would clap their hands and sing the names of the Lord in order to make him stop crying. So when he was little, he would cry and cry and cry and cry and cry until the lady started chanting Hare Krishna and then he stopped. But on one Ikatashi day, Nimai kept on crying despite Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra's chanting the names in the usual way. Ah, so his parents became confused and anxious and in desperation asked him, what do you want, child? What must we give you to make you stop crying? Nimai answered, today, they have made a rice offering to Vishnu at Jagadish's home. I want to eat some of that prashad. Give me some of that prashad and I will stop crying. <laughs> Jagannath Mishra was amazed to hear Nimai say such things. How could he know that Jagadish Pandit made a rice offering on Ikadashi? Normally on Ikadashi, you wouldn't necessarily cook uh, grains. Sometimes you would just for the Lord, but maybe you wouldn't cook. <clears throat> grains. Jagannath Mishra immediately went to his neighbor's home and was surprised to see that a large offering had indeed been made to their Vishnu deity. And it was a rice offering. Jagannath told uh, Jagadish of Nimai's request. 
And Jagannath Mishra also said he was a little worried that it wouldn't be correct for Nimai to eat rice on Ikhalashi day. So Nimai Pandit was quite uh, strict actually. He wouldn't eat rice on uh, Ikhalashi. And he even one time instructed his mother when he saw her eating grains on Ikhalashi. She said, you must, he said to her, you must do it, must honor, uh, observe Ikhalashi. So, but Gauranga's eternal associate, Jagadish Pandit knew that it was little Gopal in the form of Nimai who was hungry. Without any hesitation, he gave the entire offering to Jagannath Mishra. As soon as Nimai received the plate, he immediately stopped crying and joyfully started to eat. This pastime is described in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Adikan chapter four. The Lord grabs the things of the devotee, even if he doesn't offer them. So this is something very special. A little bit like the spiritual master. He will treat the property of his disciple as his. Of course, he'll just use it for the Lord. I remember Guru Maharaj would often um, request us or tell us, order us, do this, do that on behalf of the Lord. And uh, of course, we would be very uh, honored, honored to do that. But he shows no interest whatsoever in gifts of non-devotees. So non-devotees can give him everything, like uh, Duryodhan. <laughs> when Krishna came to Hastinapur as the peace messenger, Duryodhan had a chapan bog. He, he, he told Krishna, I heard that you like chapan bog. And um, I have made chapan bog for you. I have arranged for Chakpan Bog to be made for you. Come and eat. Of course, he was very arrogant. Um, Krishna said, no, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I'll go in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Vidur's ashram. Duryodhan was shocked. Vidur, he lives in a hut. You can come to my palace and enjoy. It's okay, Krishna said. I'll go to the hut. Mm -hmm. Krishna joyfully went to Vidur and Vidurani's ashram. And there Vidurani had very simple prashad, right? Shag. Yeah. <laughs> Spinach sabji and roti. and roti and a banana. Mm -hmm. And Vidurani was so in ecstasy that the Lord had come. She peeled the banana and gave him the peel to eat. Mm -hmm. And he ate it. <laughs> Extraordinary. And Vidur said, what are you doing, Vidurani? <laughs> You're giving the Lord the peel of the banana, not the banana. But the Lord ate the love of the devotee. He relishes that. So he takes things, even if the devotee doesn't offer it. This is the sign of a pure devotee. He took everything from Shira Prabhupada, right? <laughs> he took his family, he took his wealth, took everything from him. But of course, he gave him the whole world <laughs> in return. But uh, so sometimes this might happen to us, right? So you might, might get to bereft of something. And if we take it in the wrong way, uh, then that's our misfortune. If we take it in, yes, this thing has gone. Somebody's taken it from me. Oh, well, Lord's mercy. It wasn't meant to be. My karma. Something has, I've done in the past, I owed that person, it's gone. Krishna, thank you so much for fulfilling my debt from my previous life. Then you can live very peacefully and happily and you can be rest assured that the devotee, the Lord will always look after me. Look after the devotee. But the non-devotees, even if they offer him everything, he won't care. He's not interested. There's no love. What he's looking for is the love. That's the missing ingredient. Just as Mahaprabhu was conquered by devotion, devotion of Jagadish Pandit, so too was his dearest companion, Nityananda Prabhu, who considered him to be his own intimate associate. Nityananda Prabhu was Jagadish's life and soul. Jagadish was present in Panihati, 
for the Chirdadi Mohotsav. So he was pretty old. Jagadish and Jagannath. Before taking sannyas, Mahaprabhu ordered Jagadish to go to Jagannath Puri to preach Krishna Bhakti and the religious practice of the age, Harinam Sankirtan. So again, this is something very special. When the Lord tells you, do this. My goodness, that's real privilege, real honor. <laughs> when he arrived in Puri, Jagadish went for Jagannath's darshan and melted with love when he saw him. When on the way back to Bengal, however, he felt extreme separation from Jagannath. Jagannath Dev saw Jagadish crying and so mercifully appeared to him in a dream and told him to take his vigraha, his form, and serve it. Simultaneously, Jagannath appeared to the king of Orissa and ordered him that at the time of Nava Kalevar, when the wooden deity of Jagannath is changed, the outgoing form should be given to Jagadish Pandit. This is extraordinarily rare. Normally, this deity would be uh, put under the ground, mm. isn't it? Buried. In a garden. Buried in the Yeah. Thus, when the king met Jagadish, he considered it a great honor to give him Jagannath's outgoing form, which is known as Samadhista Vikraha. Jagadish prayed to Jagannath, asking him just how he could possibly carry <laughs> the heavy figure of deity all the way back to Bengal. Now, if you recall, when we were watching the Ratiyatra, it took so many devotees to carry Jagannath, but actually Jagannath was dancing, right? <laughs> Jagannath, Jagannath answered him, he would become as light as a cork. <laughs> Jagadish would simply cover him with a new cloth and then carry him with the help of a staff. Jagadish would make, uh, would have to make permanent arrangements to stay wherever Jagannath was sat down on the ground. So Jagadish instilled the aid of two Brahmins and they took turns carrying Jagannath as far as the village of uh, Jashori, Jashora on the banks of the Ganga near the town of Chaktaha. Jagadish left Jagannath with one of the Brahmins and went to take his bath in the Ganga. Suddenly the Brahmin found that Jagannath was becoming very heavy <laughs> and he no longer able to hold him up. Thus, when Jagadish came back from his bath, he saw Jagannath sitting on the ground and realized that the Lord wanted to stay in that very spot. Chaktaha is a historical site and an ancient holy place. During the Puranic age, it was known as Ratvarma. Pradumna killed the demon Sambara, which we'll come across uh, in a, uh, shortly. There, during Krishna's incarnation at the end of Dwapa Yuga, and it was also known as Padumna Nagar. Prior to that, when Bhagarath was, um, oh yeah, sorry, Bhagirath was bringing down the Ganga in order to save the Sagar dynasty, he buried the wheel of his chariot here. Thus, the town was also given the name Chakradaha, which in time has been transformed to Chakdaha. When the Local people heard that Jagannath deity from Puri had come to stay in Jashora. They flocked there in their thousands to seek his darshan. This is how Jagadish returned, decided to remain in Jashora rather than return to his home in Mayapur. Both Nityananda and Chaitanya visited the Jagannath temple in Jashora on two occasions, being attracted by Jagadish Pandit and his wife's paternal devotion. They held Sankirtan and a feast both times. As the Lord was about to leave Jashora to go to Puri, Dukini began to cry from the imminent separation so intensely that the Lord agreed to remain behind in the form of Gaur Gopal deity. At first, Jagannath was kept under a butter tree near the Ganga, and later the king of Krishna Nagar, Krishna Chandra, had a temple built for him. Jagadish Pandit's temple is currently being managed by Sri Chaitanya Gaudiamath. In the course of Kapu's household life, they had a son named Ramabhadra Goswami. So this is the Jagannath deity, and there's uh, Gaur Gopal next to it. 
I haven't been there personally, but it'll be amazing one day to have Darshan there. Chaktaha. This is the Jagannath Temple of Jashra at Chaktaha, the home of Jagadish Pandit. Jagadish Pandit Ki Jai. Any questions, any comments? This is a really phenomenal, uh, phenomenal personality. Hi, Bol Navin. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare. This, this temple, this Jagannath is not near Vrindavan, is it? It's, there's one on the Parikrama Mark. There's supposed to be some Jagannath mm. temple there as well. Mm. No, I think this is uh, in Bengal. Uh, probably going towards Mayapur. Going towards, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 There's sort of similar sort of thing, which is uh, Jagannath date was given in the, no, I heard some other story that he, he was sent mm -hmm. to Jagannath from Vrindavan and then he comes back and then he, there's a deity. That temple is there also looked after by some, but it's like, we're just off the Parikrama Marg, you know. I don't know. Mm, interesting. Um, going more towards the Yamuna River. Right, right. You go past all the temples and everything, and then you go on to the other side, towards Radha, somewhere there. Mm. But anyway, I might about. have to. My, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for sharing. You. So also it's the disappearance of uh, Jiva Goswami. So let's have a look at his amazing life. Uh, he's very dear to us because he's got some amazing books which we've uh, delved into a little bit. <laughs> Shila Jiva Goswami was the nephew of Shila Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis. He was a son of their brother, Anupam. He was born in the year 1511 at the village of Ramakeli, where Chaitanya Mahab first met Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. And he displayed all the charming features of a Mahapurush, divine person. He had lotus eyes, high nose, forehead, bold chest, long arms, and radiant golden body. When he was a baby, he, he, um, Sanatana and Rupa placed him at the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, who then touched him with his lotus feet. Jiva said he was very he had a very vague remembrance of that time when he touched the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. He engaged in pure devotional activity from the very childhood. He was averse to mundane sports. He would make images of Krishna and Balaram, dress and decorate them with jewels and flowers. He would offer sandalwood pulp, pay obeisances with tears in his eyes. He would offer them sweets, take prashad, distribute it to his friends. This is when he was actually, little. Yeah, actually I heard that he had deities actually of Krishna mm. Balram. Oh, okay. What is this then? He's make, make yeah, images. making images. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he had Krishna Balram yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, for a yeah. long time. Mm. He was really attached to those deities. And it's only in, in, once in his dream that uh, he saw Nityananda and Chaitanya. That's when he his focus moved. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so here it is. Jiva was so attached to Krishna that at bedtime he mm -hmm. would embrace mm -hmm. his deities and fall asleep. Yeah, he had Krishna on one side and Balram on the other side. <laughs> his parents thought he was only playing. <laughs> but the villagers rejoiced seeing Jiva's love for Krishna Balram. The sight of little Jiva sitting still and gazing unblinking upon his Krishna Balram struck awe in the eyes of all who saw him. Rupa Goswami later made arrangements for Jiva Goswami's education. He gave money to Jiva Goswami's family so they could help him with his studies. Thus, thus even in boyhood, Jiva Goswami became a great scholar in Bengal, Bengali, Sanskrit, Urdu, Arabic, and Farsi. He was an unparalleled scholar of Sanskrit, especially of Sanskrit grammar. In school, he also quickly mastered poetry logic and philosophy. Srimad Bhagavatam was his life. Krishna Katha filled him with happiness. No one dared to speak to him about anything except <laughs> Krishna. He dreamt of Lord Chaitanya in Sankirtan. He was overwhelmed with love of God and after the age of 20 left home to go to Navadvi. Okay. 
I heard that um, he was actually 11 when his, uh, his father died when he was a bit, bit younger and his mother actually passed away and he was only 11 and he went to Nongdi because he had that dream he wanted to see Chaitanya and Nityananda. Might be wrong. Yeah. And they, I think he went to Vindavan when he was 20 because mm -hmm. um, you know, that took him around and now they did mm. Parikram and things like that. Unfortunately, Jiva Goswami, Mahaprabhu had already left. So he was born in 1511. Mahaprabhu left 1524 um, for the spiritual world. His associates were all devastated as he was. However, he met Nityananda mm -hmm. at the home of Sri Vas Pandit. By the grace of Lord Nityananda, Jiva visited all the holy sites in Navadvip Dham. Lord Nityananda blessed him by affectionately placing his feet on his head and ordered him to go to Varanasi to study Vedanta Sutra and then mm -hmm. down. This was a time when yeah, they visited all the sites mm -hmm. and Nityananda told uh, Jiva Nila, in the future there will be a huge temple um, across the Ganga. That was the prediction of um, DOVP. Mm -hmm. He then traveled to Varanasi where he studied scriptures with Madhusudan uh, but just Pati, disciple of Sarvabhauma Patacharya. Then he went to Vindavan where he came under the tutelage of Srila Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. After humbly serving Rupa Goswami by washing his feet, preparing his manuscripts, editing his books, he received Diksha. So he was a scholar, right? as mm -hmm. we know, he had many languages under his belt. And he was a preacher as well, so he he would uh, he was very strong in his uh, conviction and faith in the Lord. Once during a summer, Rupa was writing Bhakti Rasamrat Sindhu while Jiva Goswami was fanning him, <laughs> and Balababat from the um, Pushti Mark, he came by to see Rupa Goswami. And they are contemporaries, so similar age. And Rupa Goswami was very respectful to Balabhapata. After reading some of Rupa's introductory verses, he suggest, uh, Balabhapata suggested some corrections. <laughs> and Rupa Goswami accepted them. He accepted Balabhapata as, um, but as um, a senior. He was very humble. Although he's extremely knowledgeable. And he is, of course, Rupa Manjari, who's the head of the Manjaris. So no, uh, no fool. <laughs> Amazing personality. Very humble. He could have destroyed Vallabhacharya's um, comments. But his humility shone through. When Vallabh went to the Yamuna to take a bath, Jiva Goswami followed him on the pretext to fetch water. So Jiva Goswami heard the corrections. He didn't like it. How dare you correct Rupa Goswami's work? So he went after Vallabhapat and he told him that you're wrong. Uh, and he uh, demanded to know what fault did you find in uh, Rupa Goswami's work? So then when Vallabhacharya told him, but Jiva Goswami then pointed out the flaws in Balabhat's arguments. And he counted every one of Balabhat's objections. So then Balabhacharya, he returned back to Rupa Goswami's hat, impressed with Jiva's scholarship. He, he recounted the entire episode to Rupa. And Rupa, he was not happy. <laughs> Rupa Goswami, he, 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 gent, he rebuked Jiva. Why can't you tolerate? Well, Vacharya is older. He's a learned Vaishnav. <laughs> so Rupa Goswami, he said to Jiva, you, you're not fit to live in Mandava. Go back to Bengal. Come back when you're ready, when you're calm. <laughs> but he didn't do wrong. He did right. Jiva Goswami did right because... Um, why did he do right? Because the spiritual master 
was being corrected, but the spiritual master wasn't wrong. So the duty of the disciple to defend the spiritual master, absolutely right. But it's also true that uh, humility and tolerating and respecting an elder sannyasa uh, personality is important. Thus banished from his presence, Jiva left Goswa, uh, Rupa Goswami's dwelling, but rather than going back to his family home in Bengali, as he was told, he went to Nandagat, nearby village. Hoping to regain his guru's favor, he began to practice rigorous austerities, worshiping Krishna intensely while fasting and eating on a bare minimum. As a result of such penances, his body became emaciated. One day, Sanatana Goswami came by there and was moved to see Jiva's condition. He took Jiva with him to Rupa Goswami and arbitrated on his behalf. And of course, Rupa Goswami forgave Jiva Goswami and affectionately blessed him. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada once commented on this guru disciple pastime. Sri Rupa Goswami was happy inside that Jiva defeated Vallabhacharya, but he cast him out to teach us that the devotee of to, to teach us a lesson. It was not done to teach or punish uh, Jiva Goswami, who's a liberated soul, eternal associate of Krishna. So Rupa sent Jiva out of Bandhava to teach all the Jivas what he wrote in Upadesha Amrit, Vacho Vegam, Manasakoda Vegam, Jiva Vegam. A devotee should control his tongue, his speech, and always men, remain humble. Pina the Bhishma. Very interesting. <laughs> Sri Jiva Goswami was the youngest but most prolific writer amongst the Goswamis. He's a super excellent Sanskrit scholar. He wrote a standing half million Sanskrit verses. That's 25 books. And I think many of these books are still, they've managed to save them, haven't they? In no. the Jiva Institute. No. Or is it some of them? It's only, only a little handful. Bit. Yeah, only a handful. Jiva Goswami would compose Sanskrit verses in his mind and write them down without changing anything. Write them down means he used a metal stylus to permanently itch them into palm leaves. This inscription method left no room for erasing. <laughs> they didn't have Tipex at mm -hmm. that time. Editing, rewriting, or running a spell check. <laughs> Yet, each verse was a priceless gem of perfect meter, rhythm, poetry, mm -hmm. and meaning. He was the greatest philosopher in all of Bharatiya history. Contemporary Sanskrits it's call him the greatest scholar who ever lived. His books show that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy gives the essence of Vedic wisdom and the perfection of religion. Anyone who faithfully reads these books will become a devotee of Krishna. Some of his most important books are Sat Sandarpa, which describes the ultimate end of devotional service, establishing the transcendental truths of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and also confirms that Lord Krishna is the absolute supreme personality of God, Swayam Bhagwan, and the cause of everything and the source of all avatars. Mm. The Gopal Champu, this is a book that we do refer to, I think. Karuna sang a bhajan from this uh, song, this uh, book, um, where Yashoda Mai is glorifying Krishna's activities before the Dhammuda Lila. So this book gives a description of the transcendental mellows of Lord, Chita, Lord Krishna's eternal pastimes in Vrindavan. Harinam Vyakarna, Sanskrit grammar, every Sanskrit word and every letter was understood to indicate Krishna. The nectar and the name of Sri Hari. The following quote comes from Jiva Goswami Nectarian Gopal Champu, which describes a playful wind down past him, the Radha Damuda. Govardhan Hill, a large form of Govardhan manifested. All the Rijvasas, along with Krishna himself, then offered obeisances to that towering form. As Sri Krishna stood by with folded hands, a great personality of Govardhan bellowed. I shall eat all your offerings. He ate and drank water by emptying all the kuns around the hill. While eating all the preparations made by the Rajapasis with his right hand, he snapped the fingers on his left hand. The Kahan men ran out of the way when Gaur then stretched out his hands to take more and called out, Aniyo, 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 
Bring more, bring more, bring more. So there's a devotee called Satyanarayan Das, a very good author, actually, who translated the Sandabas into English. And he gives this explanation of Jiva's name. Because it's a little unusual to have this name Jiva. Jiva means soul, right? Actually, Sri Jiva Goswami's name Jiva is very interesting when considered in the light of the Bhagavad verse. Ahastani sahastanam apadani chatuspadam jivo jivasya jivanam. Animals without hands are food for those with hands. Those without feet are food for the four legged. Everywhere, one jiva, living entity, is food for another. So another meaning of jiva is one who gives life to others. <laughs> Interesting. So the spiritual knowledge given by Jiva Goswami in his 25 books gives life to all the devotees. So it's a very interesting um, interpretation of his name. Another name of Jiva is Jivaka, one who makes the Jivas eminent, emit, emit, emit uh, static sounds, like the chanting of the Mahamudra. And Shri Jiva Goswami did this by supplying the esoteric meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam through his Bhagavad commentaries and the Satsam Darba. So, one who expands the nature of the Jiva, his relationship with the Lord and the process to achieve the goal, the ultimate purpose of life is Jivakan or Jiva. So after the disappearance of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami became the Gaudiya Sampadharacharya to guide all the Vaishnavas in Navadvipa Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri. Although he was undistributed, undisputed leader, he always acted as humble servant of all the jivas. Whenever Bengali Vaishnavas visited Vrindavan, he would lovingly receive them, arrange for prasad and comfortable rooms, even guide them on Braj Mandal Parikram. At the request of Acharyani, Acharyani, Janava Devi Thakurani, Jiva Goswami had Srinivas, Acharya, Narottam Das Thakur, and Shyamananda Prabhu take the Goswami's writings from Bandavan to Bengal. They translated them into Bengali, distributed them throughout Bengal. They also preached extensively and initiated hundreds of devotees. And this is his dear deity, Radha Damodar. So um, his life is um, these deities. So this is a uh, deity in Bandavan, very, very beautiful. Prabhupada lived in this temple many, many years. From this temple, he came to the West and he would return to this temple many times until they built Krishna Bharam temple. In this temple, they have so many Radha Krishna deities on this side, on this side. The main deity is Radha Damodar. And the Govardhan Shila. And there's a Govardhan Shila there, yes. Okay. Uh, oh. In 1942, Jiva Goswami is... Sorry, 1542, yeah. Jiva Goswami established the worship of Shushi Radha Damodar in Seva Kunj Vrindavan. The Samadhi stands in the temple compound. He is Vilas Munjari in Radha Damodar's Nitya Vrindavan Leela. So he's a Munjari. He appears, he appeared on Bhatra Shukla Dwadas and his disappearance is in Push, uh, Push Shukla Tritya, which is today. Jiva Goswami Ki Jai. Any comments, any questions, please? Nani Ben. <laughs> Anything you'd like to share? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah. After, uh, you have mentioned one book, Satya Sandharva book. Yes. Come across this book. You have it. It's a commentary on the Bhagavatam. And it establishes Krishna as a supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, when I read uh, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrit, I found uh, you mentioned this book itself. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. 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 Very good. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. Jiva Goswami Ki Jai. Jagadish Pandit Ki Jai.